Getting out of bed doesn't seem so hard today. We could get used to this. That's right. Despite our awful diet, the vitamins, exercise, and smoke rationing have done us a world of good. We're 34 years old and we're in the best shape of our life. Let's just set down our rifle case. Make sure we have a working cudgel. We'll get some water. We ease the door open and step out to check our traps. There are a few more dead out here. The air is thick with buzzing flies and the stench of death so strong that our stomach cramps. Despite the disgusting state of things, we're really hungry and sort of emotionally numb from all the constant terror. So we don't really think about it as we check their pockets for some candy cattles, nicotine gum, and not too much else. What about the south end? All right, we brought down a few more in our sleep. So the spike traps do eventually get broken, like this one here. I'm not sure if it's just from the zombies stepping on them or if they're actually bashing them. Either way, they're really easy to replace, so no big deal. There's a strange looking zombie flailing around blindly in the daylight. It's badly deformed, covered in so much calloused scar tissue that it can't even see anymore. It's also in terrible shape, barely able to hold itself up. It's a deeply worrying sight, even in a world where the dead are walking. But it looks like we can just avoid it for now. It looks like our traps over by the snack shop have been doing some work. We find two slumped over each other. One of them had a memory card. We don't have too much time to linger out here as a zombie spots us across the food court and starts moving in. We head back into the corridor to let the traps deal with it. There are a few more dead at the other snack shop. So either the bulk of them moved on in the night, or our nail boards have thinned the herd to the point where the food court actually looks pretty quiet today. We step out over the broken planters to see if we can grab anything from the tables. Oh no, the onion rings went bad! They've been sitting out for at least a week, and there are vermin everywhere, so it should hardly come as a surprise, but it still feels deeply unfair. There are some sealed cans of soda we can grab, though. We climb behind the restaurant counter, looking for more food. Cheese. More cheese. Italian seasoning. Flour. This is the pizza shack. Mall pizza is always terrible, but we'd kill for a square right about now. We'll take this pot too. A zombie staggers through the trashed seating area. We might as well fight him so we can keep looting. It trips over the table and we just drum on its head with our cudgel until it stops. It looks like we're no longer slowed down for being underfed. Our weight is also back up to normal thanks to all that food we ate yesterday. This is really good news. It's a Wienerville. The power's out, but these hot dogs still look good. There's another zombie here. We'll just go behind the counter. 
Welcome to Wienerville, where everyone's a wiener. So with our way back to normal and using a cudgel, it looks like we're fast enough to reliably stunlock these zombies without getting hurt. Let's just drop off the food. We make our way down the corridor toward the underwear store. We know this area should be mostly clear. There it is. Okay, we can grab the e-ink tablet PC. I should make a correction while we're here. Earlier, I said that the thermal electric suits that we get could keep cold-blooded mutants warm, but I was informed that this isn't the case. It's only stuff that's actually flagged as climate controlled, which is much more advanced gear, things that are completely sealed. I guess it's mostly a code issue, and at some point in the future thermal suits might work out for cold-blooded mutants. Until then, you can just stick a space heater in your backpack. As we cross back through the entryway, we can't help but glance back at the staircase to the upper level. From here, we can see out to the woods across the street. Lemmings dart around a parked car, too fast for the undead. We pass Party Planet, a gaudy shop full of costumes and gag gifts. And across the promenade, there's the New North Trading Company. They sell fur clothing. Fur clothing tends to be really thick and has decent bash protection, but it's weaker than leather against cutting attacks. It's also pretty much the warmest stuff you can buy. It's the middle of May right now, so we don't need any fur, but come winter time, this stuff would be awesome. There are zombies locked up in these shops that can see us, but the upper walkway is mostly empty, and this is probably why. These zombies don't seem to have any self-preservation instincts, so they've just been tripping over this railing and falling down to the lower level, especially when they hear noise or see us down there. There's a candy shop here. We're not really in the mood for candy, but we can't be picky either. This looks like a little pharmacy. We head through the back. And find a camping supply store. We've got a high volume rucksack here. These are amazing. They hold a huge amount of stuff, 89 liters. However, they're very encumbering, so let's not fight while we're wearing it. We ditch the bag and beat this zombie down. What else is out here? Catalytic cracking for solar punks. That doesn't really sound important to us right now. In fact, let's take a moment to talk about what the word punk means and why you shouldn't just slap it onto things. Punk used to be a term for a sex worker. Over time, it came to mean any kind of hoodlum. When punk rock appeared in the 70s, they called it that because the members were getting into fights, they were doing drugs, they were vandalizing things, they were drinking too much. They weren't like gangsters mostly, but they were still glamorizing a criminal lifestyle. In the early 80s, a guy named Bruce Bethke coined the term cyberpunk to describe stories like Neuromancer, Akira, and Judge Dredd. These media had a heavy focus on criminality, which is why they're called cyberpunk. Fair enough. But in the last couple of decades, people have just started slapping punk on anything they want. 
There's generally nothing punk about steampunk, biopunk, solarpunk, dieselpunk, hope punk, or whatever other conjunctions people have made. In most of these cases, it's just serving as a near meaningless filler word that's only there to indicate that the speaker is discussing genre fiction. In some cases, it's not even that. But these switchblades over here, these are totally punk. Let's get them. So these do 16 pierce damage with a base 66 move cost and rapid strike. That means they can do 10 damage every third of a second, so that kills a zombie in just over two and a half seconds. They don't have any stuns or knockdowns, and they have a minus two to hit, but that's still a ton of damage. And if we can get a martial art that adds a stunning move, we'll really be in business. Let's find something to test it out on. We pass an opening to the level below. There's a broken skylight up above us. What was that? So, I can't be sure, but I think a zombie just fell three stories through the broken skylight. It's all busted up from the fall, barely able to stand. So that's what's been happening. There are zombies up on the roof for some reason, and they've been smashing through the skylight and raining down into the mall. From here, we can see the full extent of the damage to that luxury RV. This thing has a lot of amenities, but it's pretty fragile, and the zombies have done a number on it. There's a sit-down restaurant in here, but it has too many zombies in there to want to deal with. And here's the first shop again. Push open an employee-only door and find ourselves in a kitchen. Chardonnay and mineral water in the fridge. So this was a pool hall. What the hell is crawling around on the table there? A zombie hunter. We are barely able to believe that this thing was ever human. It scrambles around on all fours, its nails and teeth sharpened into dangerous-looking spikes. Unlike the others who are just sort of stumbling around, this thing moves like an animal, and it sniffs the air periodically with awareness that the others lack. Our heart pounds as we back out through the kitchen and shut the door. That's not just a walking corpse. It's a monster. We round the corner and bump into a regular zombie. Here's a chance to try out that switchblade, at least. So as we mentioned, knives are pretty inaccurate, and we're having trouble making contact. It bites us as we struggle to get a few stabs in. We decide to head back up the corridor. In fact, it's bleeding out, so we can just shut the door and wait. It had some vitamins. A zombie child comes at us. We don't want to deal with that right now. All right, as fun as that was, we should grab our rucksack and head back to base. All right, this just loops back around. Here's that zombie again. The switchblade makes really short work of it, but the child zombie is here, so we just jog back the way we came. grab everything off the shelves in this pharmacy on our way through.
Our inventory is being kind of annoying, so let's fix that. We'll go to our high volume rucksack, we'll go to pocket settings, and we'll choose the big pocket. We will set priority on this pocket to 100. So now, whenever we pick anything up, we'll automatically try to put it into that pocket unless it doesn't fit. This means that we won't be shoving things into plastic bottles or random parts of our kit. It'll all go in here now. We spot a pristine hard hat in Party Planet. We could swap out our helmet for it and use that face mask, but we don't want to go in there with this bag on and no cudgel. There are some benches outside the pool hall, and we can actually see an electric car down in the parking lot. It's got wheels, and it has solar panels. That's enough sightseeing for now. We'll haul all our stuff back down to the hideout. We can give the hunting store a quick look. This fat zombie is almost dead, so we'll just finish it off. Outside, we find a dead zombie in a suit. Inside its briefcase, there's something unexpected. It's a road map with hand-drawn marks all over it. We can hardly believe our luck. Even in the dark, we can see that the mall is clearly indicated. Maybe this will tell us where the hell we are. Stumbling over to the light, we hold it up with bloody hands and see... We're at the Riverside Mall, at the southeast edge of the town of Minot. There are a few locations marked on the map. They appear to be abandoned buildings. And in the forest, not far from the mall, somebody's marked an X next to the words, Meet here after retrieval. Kirk. That body looked pretty fresh. Was there someone over there that he was supposed to meet before he got zombified? Kirk? Could he still be there? back into our hideout, a new plan already forming in our mind. That cave isn't far. If we can figure out how to get away from the mall without being mobbed, we might have a shot at meeting up with somebody. But it's broad daylight and we're not at full strength, so we're going to take a breather. We sit down in our armchair and grab the e-ink tablet PC. So this thing has a camera on it and we can use it to scan books. We go page by page, scanning one at a time. It eats up the battery pretty quickly, but we have plenty of those. And with that done, if we activate the tablet... It now has all of our books on it, and we can store as many more as we can find. We can read them on the tablet just like we could with physical copies. That drains the battery, but we can also quickly refer to any of the recipes on any of the books stored on this thing without wasting batteries. So for battery consumption, it's still better to use physical books for reading if possible, but this tablet is lightweight and it can come with us anywhere we go. 
It also has all the same SD card functionality as the laptop. So we'll just download these photos and songs. We take some time to look through the pictures. Excellent photos of nature. We'll also turn on some music. But since we've already seen them, now we would need to go find more to get another bonus like that. And we'll just get back to working on advanced leatherworking. Well, first let's eat some licorice and kind of chill out for a bit. Okay, there we go. We've reached four tailoring. I believe this means we can now make some proper leather gear. There we are, leather arm guards. What do we need? Tanned hides or patchwork leather sheets. So we're just gonna sew some of our leather patches together to make patchwork leather sheets. These are the patches that we got from cutting up those rifle cases. Sounds like the neighbors don't like our music. We'll just turn that off. We can make van braces or arm guards. Van braces have low coverage and don't block attacks. Arm guards have much higher coverage and they do. Obviously our brawling martial art lets us block with our arms all the time, regardless of what we're wearing, but the arm guards have a bonus to it. Arm guards have a bit more encumbrance, but it's not much, so we'll just make those. This is slow going as we're missing a proficiency, but we're learning that proficiency as we work. And since it's just the one, our focus is staying high. We work on the arm guards for about nine hours. It's difficult. Our hands keep cramping and we stab our finger a couple of times, but eventually it all comes together. And we can wear these right away. We pull them on and secure all the straps, leaving most of our arms protected by thick layers of leather. But they're conflicting with our trench coat. Eight arm encumbrance isn't a lot, but we can do better. So we simply take our trench coat and cut off the sleeves. That removes the conflict and takes our arm encumbrance down to just five. All right, so there's something I've been wanting to try, and it'll help us collect some water. First off, we've been hit by skill rust, so we're going to need to spend a minute or two practicing a bunch of skills so that we're in top form out there. All right, just some quick stretches. Now we'll grab a rifle case, and a big stack of arrows, and our compound hunting bow. We're gonna go hunting. Just making sure our hands are unencumbered. There's a crawling zombie dragging itself into the store. We knock an arrow and take aim. 52 damage. Why is it so bright at 4 a.m.? 
It's only a half moon, so that's definitely sunlight. There's another zombie. We just grazed it. We draw back another arrow and let it fly. The broadhead catches it in the eye and pierces all the way through its skull, destroying the brain. 167 damage. So this is what's special about bows. They're difficult to use and don't have a ton of range, but they are very quiet and have a 10 times critical hit multiplier. We slink through the shadows, sighting down another zombie. The first arrow sticks it in the chest, but it heard the snap of the string and is now coming our way. We shoot it again, this time in the heart, and it falls dead at our feet. 132 damage. As a reminder, these only have 80 hit points. There's a zombie cop roaming the promenade, but we're going to check out this hair salon first. Eh, maybe not. Lose the zombie in the darkness. We'll have to stay sharp, but we can get that cop from here. We are dismayed to watch as our arrow is harmlessly stopped by its armor. We try again, hoping it was a fluke. Nope, we can't hurt it with this bow. So, other than their slow firing rate, this is the main drawback of bows. They are terrible at getting through armor. The crit multiplier is only applied after the base damage is subtracted by the target's armor, and even if it gets through, it still has to be over a certain percentage of the monster's hit points, or you won't get your critical. So what that means is that these arrows are very deadly, but easily stopped by armor. If we were better at shooting, or if we had a more scientific understanding of our enemies, we'd be able to strike their weak points and bypass their armor. But we don't really know what we're doing here. Archery is very difficult, and the fact that we can even make the arrows go where we point them is pretty impressive all on its own. But that's okay, we have the darkness on our side. We cross the shadows to the other side of the promenade and leave the zombie behind. Near the fountain, we take aim at another zombie and loose an arrow. No good. Let's try again. There we go. That wasn't a clean kill, but we can probably get our arrows back if we go looking for them. These carbon fiber arrows can't be crafted. We can make some wooden ones, but they are much worse. <gasps> the cake! It's a little stale, but there's an entire chocolate cake sitting here in this case, and the bugs haven't found it yet. We start wolfing it down with our hands like a dumb beast. We're very thirsty. We'll have a crispy cranberry. Thirst is something that I could be doing a better job keeping on top of. Thirst really slows us down, and I have a habit of just kind of not noticing it. We move through the back rooms in the food court, dodging a zombie as we head further east than we've ever been before. From here we can see the entire entrance plaza. Oh, so this is a movie theater. Okay. We don't need to be back here though.
We spot something outside in the morning light that makes our stomach drop. A slavering biter. A distorted and swollen human body. Its jaws have elongated into a crocodile-like snout, dripping with foul-smelling saliva. It looks quick, like the thing we saw in the pool hall. We can tell it used to be human, but only because it's still wearing clothes. What could have possibly caused this? Let's seal up our hideout. Oh, there's a zombie out in the hunting store. Boy, the archery sounds are very satisfying. We spot a tough looking zombie and stumble backwards to take aim. The arrow strikes it in the heart and it goes down instantly. 178 damage. And that takes us to one rank of archery. There's one in the formal wear shop. Let's take it out. Near the entryway, we spot yet another undead. We keep our aim steady as it moves in close. A point-blank shot brings it down. Unfortunately, it looks like our arrow was destroyed. It must have snapped when it hit bone. Speaking of bone... A monstrous overgrowth of ossified tissue has replaced this zombie's rotting skin with an organic armor of dense bone. There's a new worry gnawing at us. We didn't see any of these weird mutated zombies before yesterday. Today we've seen three in a very short span of time. This one's slower than a normal zombie. We take a shot at it, but as expected, our arrow doesn't go in. We head out via the west exit and loop around. We can still take the other one out. There's another clothing store up at the north end. This one looks a lot bigger. 180 damage. Alright, fun is fun, but we're ignoring our mission. We left a few arrows lying around out there. We'll have to go back for them later. We're going to put this stabilizer on our bow. It will significantly increase our accuracy and slightly reduce our aim speed. We actually needed to get a rank of archery to be able to do this. We don't have the skill to put on this 5 pin bow sight, but we can put the single pin bow sight on. So this will greatly reduce our sight dispersion, meaning we'll be more accurate, and it will make us able to shoot farther and faster. This 255 here makes it look like it's slower, but that's for a farther range, so it's actually a straight improvement. Do 
do we have a dampening kit? Can we make one? Okay, so we could make a bow dampening kit with the fur from the shop upstairs, but we don't have any bone glue. Maybe that's a project for later. Just gonna double check that there isn't a dampener out here. They can make the bow a lot quieter, which would be really useful. No luck. Okay, do we have any gallon jugs? No. So we're just going to need to get all of our bottles. The coast looks clear. We'll grab the rucksack and fill it up. Sixteen plastic bottles. And a wooden canteen. We head out to the fountain and start scooping water into bottles. It's not long before we're spotted. We return with our cudgel and start busting heads. Alright, that takes care of that zombie cop. It had two Stanag mags. Those can go with an M4. There are also two USP mags with some 9mm. But no guns. The officer must have lost hers when she got killed. We can go back to filling our bottles. We light up a fire in the brazier. We're just going to take a couple of hours using the pot we got from the pizza shack to boil this water. It probably wasn't safe to drink even before there were undead everywhere. And we'll just pour it back into the bottles once we're reasonably sure it's okay. Thirty-eight units of clean water, and we can go back for more whenever we need. We'll take some multivitamins. Now we can sit back and think. We haven't found any soap, so we can't do the laundry, which leaves us still without armor. We could make something for our torso, though. A leather cuirass. It'd basically be the same idea as our corset, but thicker and more comfortable, and with better coverage. We'll need a lot of patchwork leather sheets.
We'll have some more nice clean water. We still need two more leather sheets. Just taking stock of things here. It looks like our skilled leather working is up to 64% learned. We've also started learning basic archer's form. This is a very important proficiency. So this has, I think, three levels that you can learn. And for each level you get, you reduce the strength requirement for all bows by one. Our bow currently requires 10 strength to use, so if our strength is debuffed for any reason, like it is right now for example, we'll be too weak to use it. But with this proficiency, we'd still be able to. Since your stats are getting debuffed all the time, this would be fantastic. For now, we can sit back and reflect on what's happened over the past week. We have no idea what's going on in the rest of the world, but here at the Riverside Mall, it's been a living nightmare. But against all odds, we have somehow survived. We're armed to the teeth, and soon we'll be armored. We have a little bit of food, some water, and, so we have learned, a bottomless will to live. We don't know what's out there, but we know our next move. We need to get to that cave and find out if this Kirk is alive. It's almost too much to hope, but if he is, maybe he knows how to get somewhere safe. It hardly seems likely, but it's something to hold on to. And as long as we have an objective, we can keep moving toward it.